go live and we are live all right let's start with a little bit of clapping so people know that you're in the room twice as fast to just make it sound like there's double the amount. <laughs> there's a really good amount of people in here. It's just a dead room. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. Uh, so my name is Maggie Coco. I am an American singer, songwriter, composer, vocal coach that is based here in Pongare. And I love it here, which is our hashtag, isn't it? So yeah, clap if you love it here in Pongare. All of you, that's very, very good. Um, I do love it here. It's an amazing space. And uh, we're doing a singing for life workshop, which means just some foundational stuff to make sure that you are singing in a way that is safe. And these are foundational things for anything that you're trying to sing. All right, so uh, we're gonna start off by making a couple sounds. I'm gonna explain why we're making these sounds in a second, but very first before we do that, and this is for the people watching at home, uh, I need you to shut off that little voice in your head that says, don't do that, that's a silly sound. Um, we're going to have to make some sounds in order to get to the sounds that we really want to make. Everybody in agreement? Yes. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to make a sound, you make it back. Here we go. exercise and there's a few reasons why you want to do exercises like this All right this is an exercise to help you develop vocal technique um, vocal technique is your approach to singing that enables you to do the thing and to keep doing the thing all right so you have a technique to singing whether you've developed one consciously or not all right and your technique may be working for you or it may be working against you. We wanna make sure that it's working for you. So good vocal te technique is something that helps you to be able to sing what you wanna sing, the way you wanna sing it, but also to be able to continue doing it. So um, a lot of singers uh, come to me and they're concerned about... Uh, a lot of singers who come to me are singers who um, are sounding fantastic but are losing their voices and they can't uh, do a full length show or they can't do multiple shows like shows consecutively and things like that and so this kind of technique is going to be so that you can continue to sing whatever it is that you want to sing. Um, this exercise, Sirens, is more like singing than talking is. And where a lot of us get stuck is we go to sing and we just try to make it an extension of talking. And it's not. It's a different way of using your voice. All right? Um, so things that you should have it for your, your tool belt for singing. You want tools for assessing your voice and tools for developing it. All right? So that's what we're going to talk about today is just some tools for assessment and tools for development. Um, this siren is your fundamental tool, right? It's your core one that will bring you, always brings you back to your basics. Um, so, uh, just a couple more sirens with me. Very good. So, what we're doing, first of all, is warming up the voice, all right? So warming up the voice is important because it is a group of muscles. And just like any group of muscles, if you go from cold to working it out strenuously too quickly, you can strain them, all right? So you want to warm up into whatever it is you're doing. That's why we have vocal warm-ups, yeah? The first thing you're doing is you heard that we were sliding from, through our low notes and our high notes and everything in between. This is a really gentle way to get your voice warmed up for whatever it is that you're going to be doing with it. The second thing we're doing is checking on our vocal health. This is important, it's a little bit different for our vocal cords than it is for other parts of our body because our vocal cords don't have nerve endings. All right? 
And usually, here's where I would pause and ask you all, like, what does that mean and kind of things. But since we're live streaming this, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. So this portion of it will be a little bit more just lecture, and so I'll just tell you. Um, you don't have nerve endings, so everybody go ahead and pinch yourself right here or anywhere. Um, you can feel that because of nerve endings in your skin that are communicating to your brain, ow, I don't like that, right? Your vocal cords don't have those. So that means that you can be doing things that your vocal cords doesn't like and you wouldn't necessarily know. Now, if other parts of your throat that do have nerve endings are irritated, it's likely that your vocal cords are also irritated, right? But it's also possible to have isolated um, irritation of the vocal cord that you wouldn't be able to feel otherwise. So we use things like sirens to get to know our voice, to get to know what is normal for it, and therefore we can tell when it's not acting normally, right? So if you're doing, uh, if you develop a practice of using sirens, you can actually do this with, with any exercise. If you're doing the same thing every day, you're gonna notice when something changes, right? So, uh, but we recommend sirens for a few other reasons. Um, we're gonna do a couple of those, and if you're not singing often, right now, this isn't gonna give you in any information. But when you start doing it every day, you're gonna notice fluctuations. There's a lot of normal fluctuations in your voice. Your voice is different at different times of day. Your voice is different at different times of the month, right? Hormones and things will affect your voice. Different times of your life, your voice is going to change, all right? So your voice changes, grows, and evolves as you do, right? It fluctuates, it has good days and bad days. Um, what we want to get a handle on is the things that are within our control, all right? So some things that are within your control that can affect your voice include things that you consume, all right? So um, things that you consume, can consume before you sing that might not be a good idea. Are you guys comfortable answering questions if your voice is on camera or not? Some of you are. If enough of you are, I'll just, I'll just ask and do this the way that I'm used to. But you don't have to, you know. Okay, cool, thank you for that. Um, so what are some things that might be uh, good for your voice if you consume them? Coconut water. Yeah, anything hydrating, yes? It takes a lot of water to operate the system. In fact, if your voice is not operating well or in its normal capacity, the number one reason is usually just dehydration. You don't have enough water for this, for this system to operate. All right, so always check in with that first. Um, what else? Other things that you can consume that are good for your voice? Pineapple juice. I haven't heard that one. Why is pineapple juice? Do you know? I was told from a um, New Zealand musician. Oh, I believe you. Pineapple juice was after you sing to it's like healing. Ah, pineapple juice for healing. We'll have to. I'll have to Google that. I'm not sure about that one. Um, anything warm is going to be nice for your voice. It's going to be relaxing, just like warmth relaxes your other muscles. Warmth is relaxing. Um, conversely, cold, not so great, right? Cold is going to make your vocal cords more rigid. So avoiding drinking things with ice in them while you're trying to sing. This doesn't mean ever. It's not like, I have to swear off ice now because I'm a singer. Uh, it's just while you expect to be using your vocal cords in that way, give them a break. Um, okay, good. Um, honey, lemon, tea. There's reasons that these things are go-tos, yeah? Um, things that you maybe shouldn't eat before you, or consume before you sing. Cheese. Things with dairy, yes, yeah? So the ice, things with dairy, why dairy? I just saw someone go, no! Why? <laughs> this doesn't mean never. Again, this doesn't mean never dairy. Um, but why, why not dairy? Mucus inducing, yeah. Anything that's gonna make you like, Right, so none of that stuff. Um, hydration is important, so anything dehydrating can affect your voice, right? Alcohol, a lot of people are like, no, I need that to sing. <laughs> Alcohol, um, caffeine, 
um, it, it, that's a vasovagal constrictor. So things like that can affect your vocal cords. That said, everybody's voice is different. So everybody's voice works more or less the same way, but everybody's instrument is different. So you each sound different, your voices are all um, sensitive or more or less sensitive to these things at their own kind of pace, if that makes sense. So you want to find out what works and doesn't work for you. So coming back to sirens, having something that you consistently come back to that you're using to gauge your voice and how it's working, that's what this is for. All right. So um, the more often you do them and in different contexts and consider those different contexts, the more you're going to get to know your voice and how it works and what, you know, what does and doesn't work for it. Okay, so that is our first two reasons to do warm-ups, um, warming up the voice, checking on vocal health. The next two reasons I'm going to give you have more to do with the actual foundations of singing. Yeah, you're welcome to sing. No. Like, I'm committed. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. Very good. All right, a couple more sirens. So where do you support from when you're singing? Diaphragm. Diaphragm. Nice and low. So everybody give this a go. You're going to breathe into, and this is where you might want to think about singing. <laughs> you're going to breathe into the soft parts of your body, right? So when the doctor puts a stethoscope here and goes, take a deep breath, and you go, <gasps> you're at, like breathing to where the stethoscope is, you're actually taking a very shallow breath because this part of you does not expand. We want to breathe into the expansive parts of our body, which is more here, all right? So here for people on the thing. So you're gonna breathe into here. When the air comes out, you're gonna pull up from the bottom, all right? So you're gonna think about, you guys know what a push pop is? Do you guys have those here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like a little, for those of you who are shaking your head, no. And I know people in the States will know what a push pop is. But a push pop is like, um, it's like an ice cream treat, kind of in a cylind cylindrical uh, cardboard thing. And it's got like a little um, platform on the bottom. And you eat the ice cream at the top and then you push the platform and then more ice cream comes up and the effect of that, right? So bottom up, right? We want to do the same thing. So the air is going to come into here and you're going to engage these lower abdominal muscles. You're you want to come from beneath. So. Um, for those of you who it is safe to do so, I want you to come into a wee squat here. All right. So these same muscles that are holding your upper body upright, the ones I, I'm, I'm talking about, like between the hip bones, it's lower than you think. All right. Your lowest muscles between here, these are the ones I want you to consider engaging. Okay. So go ahead and relax yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, I want you to imagine that you've got a, a hook, and it's hooked into those lowest abdominal muscles, okay? And there's a string attached to that hook, and it's going to come straight up through your body, through the top of your head, all right? And so everybody grab that string on the top of your head, okay? And you're just going to give it a couple light tugs, and I want you to feel that you are the, you're actually pulling up from the bottom up like a push box. So when you pull, it's like, yeah, yeah. you feel that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is where you're going, your support for your singing is gonna come from. So you're gonna breathe into here and you're gonna pull up and then all that air is gonna, be, is gonna come through because you're drawing it up, you're pulling it up. And I want you to imagine that it comes straight out the top of your head, all right? So we're gonna do a siren of that in mind. Good. Now I'm going to tell you uh, something that I, I just want you to commit this to memory. Your higher pitches require more support 
And a lot of us intuit that, and we go to give it more support from the wrong places. And when we do that, the note doesn't come out. So then a lot of us go, I don't sing high. I don't have high notes. You probably do. It's just that you're not approaching them well. All right? So let's get in from the bottom. Find your string, and you're going to pull up. Ah, real quick. Higher notes need more support. So you're, if we're going to start with a high note and come down, your strong pull is going to be wherever the high note is. So if the high note is first, your strong pull is first. Good, again. Good. If your high note is at the end, that's where your strong pull is going to be. So we're going to do our string, and strong pull is going to be at the end. Let me just demonstrate real quick. Do you guys feel the difference? All right? So strong pull where your high note is. So there's a pull all the way through, because there's no support if you're not pulling. Right? But the higher note actually needs more support. So you're going to give it, it's like giving it more gas when you have to go faster. Right? That's coming up from the bottom. All right? So uh, follow me with the string and the pitch. Okay? Good. Good. So that high note was at the top, so the strong pull was at the top. We're going to start changing it up. Okay? Good. that it's just, oh, the high note is at the beginning, or the high note is at the end. Phrases often go like this, right? Which means that your support when you're singing needs to kind of adjust and flow. It's going to be continuous, because you need to be using air continuously, but you might need to be giving it more or less gas, depending on what's happening in the phrase. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Before you start singing is when you prepare for what you're about to do. So the breath is extremely important, right? The moments before you sing are where you prepare for success or you don't. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to demonstrate with this uh, song called The Water is Wide. Um, it's got a longish phrase, and um, I'll try to show... I'll try to show here what I'm doing with my support. Um, I'll just do one and maybe a couple phrases. Here we go. The water is wide, I can't cross over. So you see it was a consistent pull, and when I had that jump to the higher note, there was a little bit more. All right? So, um, not everybody knows that one, so I won't, I won't have us do that all together. Um, maybe after we do the, the, the streaming part, <laughs> we'll see. Um, so, I'm going to go all the way through the song. It's a short, it's a folk song, so it's short, strophic. Um, and I'm just going to kind of demonstrate what this support's going to look like, okay? The water is wide, I can't cross and neither have I wings to fly. Build me a boat that can carry two, and both shall rule my love and I. And so each time I'm resetting for what I'm about to do. Does that make sense? So I need to, my breath needs to accomplish a couple of things in terms of I need to have enough air for the length of phrase, but also for the height of the phrase. All right? You get a feel for that the more you do it. Yeah? Um, cool. Uh, the last thing that I want to, I want us to focus on when we're doing our siren specifically. So this is just warm-ups. This It's so important to have a good warm-up routine for knowing your voice and for just 
keeping reiterating these foundational things because once you start singing, you're doing all this other stuff on top of it as well. You're multitasking, you're singing specific pitches, now you're singing specific rhythms, you're working on your phrasing, you're working on all this stuff that you, have, you, you wanna be doing simultaneously. You don't wanna have to be thinking about the real foundational stuff. You need to free your brain up to focus on other things. So work on your foundations just being there, okay? Um, all right, last thing I want to draw your attention to is called the soft palette. All right, so your soft palette is how you manipulate your tone and projection and things like that. All right, um, for those of us who don't know, take your tongue, put it behind your top teeth, and drag it back across the roof of your mouth until you can't quite reach anymore. It should start to get soft. You feel that? You can relax. That's the beginning of your soft palette. Your soft palate goes back and around. And if I lift my soft palate really high, I'm going to have a very Julia Childs-esque tone. Everybody turn to your neighbor and introduce yourself like this. Hello, my name is. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> very good. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful job. You're going to go back and watch this and just laugh at that. And um, if I jam my soft palate down, all the air comes through my nose and I have a very nasal tone. Please turn to your neighbor now and introduce yourself like this. Hi, my name is... Excellent. Very good. Yeah. So you can, you can consciously manipulate your soft palate when you are aware of it. All right? And this is what we want to do when we're singing. Where your soft palate sits when you're talking is at about the appropriate level for everyday, for, for projecting everyday speech, right? Have you ever met someone who projects just a little bit too loudly for everyday speech and it's a little bit uncomfortable? Um, most of us have this sort of tacit agreement that we're all gonna hold our soft palate in roughly the same space um, for, for those kinds of social reasons. Um, but if you move, so I encourage you to just play around with it. This is also how character, like voice actors, make different sounds is with the, you know, the placement of the soft palate, among other things. Um, and when you're crafting your voice and your sound and what you want to do, you're going to play with this. And it's nice to do it consciously, I think. Because um, you have a lot of choices in this way. It's also nice to confront your default settings, especially if your default settings are not working for you. Right? This is one of those things where, um, remember how I said that people go to sing higher notes and then they just don't come out and, they, they, and they're like, ah, I guess I just don't sing high. Um, <laughs> It could be, so this, this is what I mean by, um, I think I, I, that before we jumped on camera, I was like, we're gonna learn how to be um, detectives and figuring out what's going on with our voices um, when it's not doing what we want it to do. Um, say you're having trouble hitting a note and you're feeling like, ah, this is a really high note. There's three, there's more than three things that could be going on, but there's three common things that happen, right? One is, not enough of that diaphragmatic support. You're trying to support it then from smaller muscle groups that can't carry that load, right? So it ends up sounding strained or it just doesn't come out. Um, the second thing is not giving it enough soft palate space, right? Higher pitches besides any more support also just need more space to exist in, right? So if I'm going, um, he, he, what is that? he, 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 why am I in minor? I don't know, I'm in minor today. Now I do that same thing up the octave. See how much space I had to actually create for that? I'm going to do that again. You can see the space that I had to make for that. And it's not jaw dropping space, it's soft palate lifting space. And if you didn't make enough space, if you don't make enough space for those notes, they're gonna be squeezed into it. So let me, let me see if I can do that high up without making the space. So what I'm gonna try to do is sing up that octave. Actually, no, I, think, I don't think I'll be able to do it. I kind of auto make that adjustment. Let me see if I can trick myself into doing it wrong. Um, so, <laughs> see, did you hear that flip? I'm trying to. You're 
all like, tell us how! <laughs> um, yeah, working on it. So, <laughs> so, um, so what I did with that last one, which was, of course, the one that had the most ease, you know, was I was supporting from here and I made sure there was enough space for the higher, for where I was going. Right, so even though I started here, I knew I was going here, and I had space for that, so I made this space before I started, and just moved into it. Let's try that together. This, we're all gonna do it in the same key, and it might not be the key for you. We're just trying a thing. <laughs> One, two, ready, and... Good. How many of you tried and felt like that wasn't quite right? Quite right. Yeah. Okay. So, and how many of you tried and were like, I made an adjustment and it worked? Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's exciting, y'all. <laughs> yeah. It's a process because it's um, the trickiest thing about music and there's a couple of things one is it's happening in real time right so you have to make these decisions and these adjustments in real time um, and uh, the other thing is often that understanding what we need to do often comes way before being able to actually do the thing <laughs> that we want to be able to do and it's that gap that is such a pain it's that gap where we have to like give ourselves grace and time to actually be applying it for it to click. Because your brain can understand what your body needs to do, but your body need, and your brain need to communicate. You need to give the synapses time and the, the muscles time to, sometimes you actually need to just develop strength or things like that. For some of us, when we did this, we were like, oh God, <laughs> you might have to develop some actual like different muscle groups and things like that. These things take time. All right, so please be kind to yourself. Judgment is the enemy of creativity, and especially when you're singing or looking at anything that has to do with your identity in the world, um, we can shut ourselves down so fast. Yeah. Um, so please be kind to yourself. Um, let's talk a little bit about tone, because soft palate is also responsible for tone. So the soft palate, um, we've said, we've talked about it is necessary for projection, right? So when I lift my soft palate, my pitch rises kind of naturally, easily, and it also projects further without me having to try, right? So it sounds more musical. Default setting when you're singing in a relaxed way should always be a raised soft palate because when your soft palate is raised, you can access any note within your range. You can sing your low notes with more than enough soft palate space, but you can't sing your high notes without enough soft palate space. So if you default high, you can just access everything. That said, when your soft palate is high, you also have this particular kind of tone that may not be a tone that you're going for. All right? So um, this is where... Um, so this is where philosophies start to kind of diverge, right? And there's um, different genres of music have different approaches to this, all right? Um, so my, I'm a classically trained vocalist, but I work primarily in contemporary popular music, okay? So my approach has always been when I am singing and I don't have to be doing anything that's hard on my vocal cords um, to make it as easy on myself as possible to default to this um, lift a soft palate, fully supported space. Um, say I'm learning a song, uh, say I had to learn Don't Stop Believing. Don't stop believing, hold on to that feeling, street light. People. That's not how I'm going to sing it on stage, because that's not appropriate for that song. But when I'm practicing getting the right notes, when I'm practicing getting the right rhythms, when I'm practicing anything except developing the tone that I want for that song, I'm going to do it in a relaxed vocal space to protect my vocal cords. All right? Now, a chest voice 
bring or chest. So there's chest. Most people have heard of like chest voice and head voice, and these are kind of misnomers because that head voice is actually just that relaxed vocal space that you can hit any of your notes from. So it's not only this side of your voice and then your chest is here. This side of your this it's just that you can only access this side of your voice from this relaxed vocal space, lifted soft palate kind of space. Right? To me, that is your relaxed voice. Right? And you want it to be supported and you can develop it to, a, for a lot of people it's kind of a weak sounding voice, a little <laughs> bit airy and things like that. People are like, ew, I don't like it. Um, you can develop it to be stronger and it doesn't involve pushing or anything like that. It's entirely about how you direct the air through your body, right? So I don't think um, anybody would accuse me of having a weak upper register. I sing in my upper register a lot. But what I do is I focus the sound through, this is called the mask when you're singing. So I, I bring the air up, I send it through my soft palate, and then it's very focused when it comes through my mask. So it's, it's almost like a sharp laser like, Right? And then I can take some of that vibrato out of it to get a slightly more, to, to get different tones, right? But what I'm doing is I'm only doing as much as I need to get the tone that I'm going for and no more. I'm almost never singing in full chest voice. Full chest is, uh, that's when people burn their voices out because they're just pushing from here, right? They're trying to push forward. Um, can we come back to this like string pull? And remember how I said I want you to bring the air out the top? I want you to think of it like this. When the air comes up through and it's going to go up and away towards your audience, right? It's actually going to have a further trajectory than when you're going nah, at them like this, all right? So from a relaxed from here and supported from here vocal space and you direct the air through here, you're actually gonna be able to project much better than you will when you're trying to push it forward from here, okay? Um, the tones that a lot of us want, so we'll get back to don't stop believing. Um, full chest. Don't stop believing, hold on to that feeling. That was more than it needed. Could you feel that? Right? I was giving it a lot, and it's in the direction of, it's, it's way past the direction of the tone that I want. Right? And it's just hammering my vocal cords for no reason at all. And what I'll do is pull back, give it only as much as it needs, to have the tone that I want. Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. Street light people. Still not the easiest song to sing. And I wouldn't do it over and over again. And I would think about where you're going to place it in a set list. Does that make sense? So these are all things you want to consider if you're going to be singing over and over again. Um, we have a few people in here that sing in cover bands. Cover bands are one of the hardest things to do because think about a regular band, right? A regular band has like one or two bangers, like really hard hitting and the rest of their set, they get to go like this. Cover bands, you do the banger, for every single different band. So every song that you're singing is the hardest song that that band does, <laughs> often. Not all the time, not as a general rule, but that's one of the reasons that singing in cover bands is really tricky. And the musicians that you're playing with don't understand that. Their instruments are not as sensitive and they're not as, um, uh, uh, they're not as limited. You need to protect your voice, and a lot of the times the musicians you're working with have no concept of what this means. And it's different for each of you, right? You need to know what your voice can and can't handle. 
you need to be able to advocate for your voice. You need to be able to, in rehearsals, say you've got to drill the same thing over and over again with the band, and it's not a, uh, it's, it requires belting, right? If you're not practicing your tone right now, right? Don't sing it at full, right? Don't say it at, you just, they need to go over and over it again to get some sort of hit or something like that, fine but I'm singing from a relaxed vocal space over top just to give you a reference point. You know, that kind of thing. And then people hammer their voices over and over and over again and then come to me and go, I'm losing my voice, I can't sing, what am I doing? I'm like, you're just going so hard. <laughs> you don't need to do that much. Mm -hmm. We are energy conservators as singers. Mm -hmm. And you'd be surprised how little you actually need to put into it if you're supporting from the right spaces and things like that. Um, let me see what else did I have that I wanted to go over. Um, okay, so about accessing and learning to manipulate your soft palette, getting it to lift as your default, sirens are great for this. Every time you breathe is when you set yourself up. So every time you breathe is when you take air into the soft parts, is when you lift the soft palate, right? So let's just do a couple more sirens with this in mind. Like, yes, I know. <laughs> um, all right, good stuff. Um, do we have, I'm just going to check our thing to see if we've got any questions. Nothing coming up there. All right, cool. Um, any questions from people in the room about any of that? Anything that applies to you specifically that you want clarification on? that you don't mind having in front of the camera. Um, yes? Breath control. Right. So when to take the breath? When to take the pause? When to take the breath, when to take the pause. Okay, I love this one. Um, the breath has rhythm. Just like everything else that you're doing, it should be a part of the thing that you're singing and it keeps you in time with the music. So um, I'm going to use the water is wide again, for example, and then I'll pick another one that's contrasting so that you can have the, the feel. So here's my beat. So uh, the where to take the breath has to do with the rhythm of the music. Okay? So if this is my beat for the water is wide. I'm going to sing it a little higher, please. Before you You've got to make sure you're like ready to start singing before you start singing. The water is wide, I can't pursue, and neither have I wings to fly. Build me. are back to back on this one. So you've actually only got so much time to breathe without coming out of time, right? So that's going to be part of your calculation for that. So if I, um, let me slow it down a little bit. The water is wide, I can't cross and Do you get the feel for that breath? And each of those breaths, it's part of the next phrase. It's not, it's not like breath, sing, breath, sing. That breath is part of the next thing that you're doing. 
it's part of the momentum. So before I start singing, if I'm, and I, I highly recommend doing this, let everything get, let, just let everything stop. The water is what, and you could feel how my breath was part, it started before I started singing. It started with the breath. You guys can feel that? So the breath has rhythm, it's as much a part of the phrase as anything that you're singing. Um, where you breathe should make sense for whatever it is that you're singing next, rhythmically. Um, and if you have time to, so a lot of times it's like like the one that I just sang, where you've only got half a beat to breathe, and you have to you have to make it really productive. Um, sometimes you've got lots and lots of time between phrases, and even then, the breath should be a the the breath is a part of that rhythm. So let me see if I can. This is more the James Taylor version of this song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The water is wide, I can't cross over, and neither have I wings to fly. Build me a boat I can carry to, and both shall very rarely waiting until right before the phrase to breathe. If I have time, I'm, there's no, there should never be, there should never be any dead air, even when there's space between phrases. It shouldn't die. Even the, the space between the phrases should feel like it's going somewhere, building towards something, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. This is a slightly yes. more advanced um, but I, I love this part of it. I love when a singer gets to this part where they're like, okay, I'm singing everything, like everything's in the right places and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, now. <laughs> Let's get it sounding really good. This is the stuff that um, I call phase two of the song development. Phase one is, uh, and this is actually for my, this is uh, in a couple weeks I'm doing a workshop called um, uh, Performance Ready, so how to take a song from beginning to being, like, being performance ready, and this is a big part of it. This is those things that when you hear somebody doing it, it makes it sound amazing, but you can't quite put your finger on what it is when you're just listening to it, unless you like know what it is, you're like, oh, they're just, they're just so good, they've just got it sus. It's this kind of stuff, right, that you can't really hear, but you can feel. Um, that's where you should be breathing. Any other questions that people will feel comfortable sharing on camera? And then I'm going to say bye to y'all. <coughs> Question about soft pellet? Yes. I'm not quite sure how I know. Is it that you're singing high and just trying to project? That is a good question. How do you know if you're lifting the soft pellet? Um, uh, let's do a siren together again. <coughs> you're lifting your soft pellet because if you weren't, you couldn't have made that sound. All right. So you are doing it. Um, you also lift your soft palate when you're yawning. Yeah. You also unhinge your jaw when you're yawning, and we don't need that part because that will actually defocus the sound and the air and kind of draw it down in a way. When when choir directors are saying open your mouth, often what they mean is lift your soft palate, not drop your jaw. Right. This is going to make the sound. how it's more focused when my mouth when my my mouth was a little bit more closed right it, but I, it's all the soft palate space on top that focuses it yep and so yawning if you're not sure about it and again that's one of the reasons that sir sirens are such a great fundamental exercise because it's like these are the things I need to make sure I'm doing all the time no matter what I'm saying and now let's add all that other stuff on top <laughs> you know? right, thanks so much for that question anybody else you talk about times of the day. Mm. Uh, are there any like known times of the day? It's best not to sing, or is it totally individual? People tend to not like to sing in the mornings, and it's because you haven't really even spoken much at that point, so your voice is just not as warmed up. So it's easier 
the more you've used it, assuming you haven't overused it or abused it. Um, something I didn't say earlier that um, popped into my head was how to know if your vocal cords are cranky, if you can't feel them just by listening. Um, if you go to make a siren, again, because you do them all the time now and you know your voice really well, <laughs> and you have something called delayed onset, you go to make the sound and it doesn't quite come out like it should, or you, you like lose some pitches in there, you got some graveliness, things like that. Um, those, uh, and that's new for you, um, that can be a sign of isolated irritation. Most of the time that thing, kind of thing is going to be temporary. If it's not going away on its own or with anti-inflammatories, at that point you'd want to see an ENT and make sure, get a scope and make sure everything's okay. Not to be super scary or anything like that. Um, another thing that I want to bring up to come back to uh, chest mix and head voice is, um, so that head voice is, head voice, that's your relaxed voice. You can hit all of your notes from that tone. That's why you can slide through your whole range like that. Right, I can sing my entire range from this setting, right? Um, I've got a song that wants more, um, more chest. Uh, what I want to bring up is the, uh, we sort of talked about that. What I want to bring up is the passaggio, which means Italian for passage, and this is that break in your voice. That's the place where you can't go any higher. When I was demonstrating earlier, and it kind of did that little flippy thing, whoop, whoop, that kind of, oh, oh, can't do that. Now we're in the head voice, you know, kind of thing. Um, the way to na navigate that depends on the genre of music you're singing and stuff like that. There's a lot of genres of music that use that flip, right? Yodeling. I'm not great at it because <laughs> I haven't practiced a bit. You know, kind of like jumping. Yodeling uses that flip and accentuates that you've got you know, uh, here's a, here here's my voice sitting in a chesty place, and I'm gonna flip it real high into this head voice setting, right? Um, you've got uh, lots of current contemporary popular music has singers uh, singing in a more chesty, speaky range, and then flipping to a very soft voice. That's using the soft palate and um, not focusing the tone and filling the air, moving the air through so that it becomes equally um, uh, strong from one end to the other, so that there's different genres of music that like use that that differentiation. But if you're the kind of singer that wants to make it seamless from one end to the other, which is like your um, your Beyonces and your uh, like your your big '80s pop singers with those huge massive ranges and stuff, they were never singing in full chest voice. Never, never, never. They were always singing in a really supported, re really well supported mixed voice. So um, one of the uh, cover songs that I end a lot of my shows on is Love on Top, um, Beyonce, which has five, uh, four, four or five key changes in it. Um, I don't know, because I do seven. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it, um, uh, if you start in a, to in more of a chest voice than you can end in with the last key, your voice is gonna sound like it gets weaker as it goes, right? So if you start like, um, honey, honey, I can see the stars all the way from here. You put my love on top, baby. That's not too high. And then you put my love on top, baby. You put my love on top, baby. You put my love on top, baby. You put my love on top, Baby, you put my love on top, baby. You can hear how it's starting to get more strained. Yeah. I'm gonna start from the same vocal space that I'm gonna sing the last one in comfortably, right? So, da, da, put my love on top, baby, cause you're the one that I love, baby.
chest before you get to the passaggio, that's that break, that, that note where you can't take the chest voice any higher, start moving out of it before you get there. So that by the time you get there, you're already in that relaxed, supported, and focused head voice space so that it's the same tone. Right? Does that make sense? And this is just knowing your voice. Oh, God. No, keep it going. I haven't stopped yet. <laughs>